the structuralist program grew out of another Princeton philosopher, Paul Benassaraf. I think his paper was entitled What Numbers Cannot Be. Yeah. And you have a paper titled Why There Can't Be Numbers. <laughs> and so what is the, the gist of that argument that you make there? Yeah, so I guess this is one, I guess, yeah, I basically have like two main papers arguing for nominalism, and this is one of them. Um, yeah, so, so basically if there are these abstract platonic things, I'm just like really curious about what they're actually like. Um, so I want to know more about these abstract entities. And sadly, like, we don't really know much about them in the sense that um, abstract objects are often defined in a negative way. So like an abstract object is something that's non-physical, non-spatiotemporal, non-causal, non-mental, et cetera. So we have all these negative characterizations, but I just want to know, if, is there anything positive to say about the nature of these objects? So you might look at math, mathematical practice, like does math tell us what, what, what the number two actually is like? And um, yes, so, so I think ultimately when you look at math, Math actually doesn't tell you anything about what the number two is like. It, it tells you all of these relational facts, these sort of structural facts. So, you know, like the number two comes after the number one, it comes before uh, the number three. And even these properties like being even or odd are actually ultimately cashed out in terms of a bunch of relations. So like to say that the number 10 is even, it's just to say that like there's this other number or two that bears this divisor of relation to 10. Um, and I think ultimately when you get down to it, um, everything in math is this purely relational thing. And you can see that via the fact that mathematicians only care about things up to isomorphism. So they, they care about the relations that things stand in, but you could put in whatever you want for the actual members. They only care about things up to isomorphism. So, so I think if you, so like the number two doesn't have any kind of properties that we ordinarily encounter. It's not physical, spatial, mental, causal, whatever. And math doesn't tell you anything about the intrinsic properties of number two either. It just tell, you know, comes after one, comes before three, it's prime, but that's analyzing the relations. So I was thinking like, is there anything at all to say about what the number two is like? And um, in, in the metaphysical literature, people sometimes talk about uh, these things called bare particulars. And bare particulars are these like hypothetical things that have no intrinsic properties at all. So no color, shape, size, smell, nothing. Uh, so there's, they're, 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 they're things, they're particulars, but they're bare and so that they don't have any intrinsic properties at all, or at least no sort of positive. They have a bunch of negative things, like they're non-massive, non-colored, non-shaped, but they don't have any kind of positive character. And a lot of people throughout history, like since the ancient Greeks, or whatever, have been very mystified by this notion of a, of a bare particular, like something that genuinely exists, but it has like, it's like nothing at all. And when I try to like conceive of a bare particular, like in my mind, I have this sort of idea of like a gray pearl or something, but, but obviously it's neither <laughs> gray nor a pearl. So, uh, so yeah, so I find it like difficult to even conceive of a bare particular. And I think there's certain independently motivated metaphysical views that are just incompatible with the existence of bare particulars. So, I mean, this gets into the weeds, but, you know, metaphysicians think a lot about the relationship between an object and the properties that it has. And there's a traditional metaphysical view where they're just like two separate categories. There's the objects and the properties and the objects have the properties. But there's another metaphysical view known as like the bundle theory where, where like there isn't like a thing that has the properties. Really, there's just like a bundle of properties and that's all there is to objects. And the bundle theory is just incompatible with the existence of bare particulars. So the idea of a bare particular is like if you strip away all the properties, there's like something left, a kind of bare pearl or something. Um, but there's certain metaphysical views where, no, there isn't this like thing left after you get rid of all the properties. So, so anyway, so I guess the argument on the paper that I try to defend is something like if there were abstract mathematical objects, they would be bare particulars, uh, but there's independent reason to be skeptical of the existence of bare particulars. Therefore, uh, there's independent reason to be skeptical of the existence of abstract mathematical objects. Um, so yeah, I defend the view that mathematical objects, if, if they exist, would be bare particulars by this kind of structuralist view that all mathematics tells us about these things are purely relational. And I defend the there are no bare, partic bare particulars view. I mean, first, I just have a very strong metaphysical intuition that there's something very spooky and coherent about bare particulars, that things have to have a, some certain kind of positive character to them. But also, they're independently motivated metaphysical views that are incompatible with them. So, so anyway, that's what I try to defend in, in that paper. Um, the way that you started, or maybe this isn't how you started off, but it seems like Something akin to Ben Osraf's argument 
pushes you away from this idea of numbers as objects to numbers as structures. And then within structuralism, there are two broad camps and the finer grain distinctions between eliminative and non-eliminative structuralists. Yeah. The eliminative structuralists think that you can get rid of the abstract objects. So you find yourself in this category yeah. because primarily there's no good positive argument for the existence of the abstract objects. Um, or there's no good account of what they would be like. Yes, yes, existed. yes. Um, so that's one reason. I mean, I think I have this other paper that I think I also uh, like, but that's one reason I'm inclined towards them. I think we don't have any positive account of what they would be like, and we have independent reason to think there has to be some positive account of what they're like. Have you read this paper? I only saw it in an anthology, a paper by N, somebody named N.P. White. I don't think so. Oh, it's an interesting paper. He's actually, I don't know if he's still alive, but he was a Plato scholar. But early in his career, he wrote one paper on the philosophy of math. And it is building off of Ben Ostraff's paper. And he takes a Pythagorean stance okay. and argues that... Uh, there are different number structures all around us and yeah um, sure yeah i'm fine yeah. with thinking that there might be concrete entities that realize structure so imagine i mean this is imagine there's a row of dominoes that's never ending mm -hmm. then you could just label the first one as one the next one is two and then there's this successor of relation that's like you can think of as the two centimeters away from relation and then you can think of our natural number talk as just talk of the dominoes and like uh, there's simply many dominoes there's this domino has this relation to these other dominoes. So yeah, I'm fine with there being lots of physical things that instantiate certain natural structures. And I think that's really the explanation for why physics is, or math is useful in physics, that there are certain physical structures that are sort of concrete instantiations of certain mathematical patterns. So yeah, so I'm happy with that, yeah. Then how does this view in the philosophy of mathematics that there are no abstract objects, mm -hmm. everything is concrete, and maybe this is putting a word into your mouth, physical. How does this square, though, with your idealistic? Yeah, so I guess I, yeah, I just, I guess I just say everything is concrete. And then uh, there's actually the word physical is kind of a mess. Uh, I mean, some like panpsychists want to say they're physicalists and things. So anyway, so I guess I would just want to say everything is concrete or concrete is something like, I don't know, engages in causal relations to other things and they're paradigm examples all around us and this kind of stuff. Uh, there's nothing that's uh, non spatial temporal, non-causal, non-mental, all this kind of stuff. So there's none of that stuff. This guess how it defined.